Welcome back, I'm Sid again. And last year something different happened. Google made Pixel, a smartphone whose both hardware and software are optimized by Google itself. It has now been 4 months since this phone has launched and 4 months since this phone has been at my house as my brother's daily driver. So I decided to make a video telling you how this phone has aged and more importantly, should you be buying this phone in 2017 or not? Now this is the 5 inch Google Pixel, not the bigger Google Pixel XL. And the reason I've decided to review this one is because compact 5 inch phones these days in the market are a rarity as phablets continue to dominate the industry nowadays. And I'll tell you something as a prelude, I'm not liking this phone. In fact, I'm convincing my brother to sell this phone off. But why? It's such a good phone, you've heard such great reviews about this phone, why am I saying that? Well, I'll answer that in this video. But let me start by telling you about the most disappointing feature I have with this phone, the designing. Now it's not the best looking phone out there, it's at best mediocre. The phone looks a lot like the iPhone and Google intentionally made it like that. However, when you copy something blindly, you do take the good but you forget to omit the bad. And something similar has happened with the Pixel itself. The bi biggest example for this is the bezel at the bottom. Now, iPhone's design is now 3 years old, but it works for it because there's a home button at the bottom bezel. The Google Pixel does not have a home button there, it does not have a capacitive row key like a Xiaomi device, it does not even have a fingerprint scanner like a Moto device. So basically, that space is just a waste. And yes, I know that the back is a bit different, it is made up of half glass and half metal. Yet, if you check out the drop tests for this phone, you'll notice that this thing isn't the most durable out there. So basically, the phone does look a bit better from behind, but since it's fragile, you'll have to case it anyway. So in retrospect, the designing of the smartphone does not appeal to me that much. But heading to the display, it's a 5-inch AMOLED screen which is both crisp and compact. The colors are vivid and rich. Now the Full HD resolution might be a bummer for those who are comparing this with the Samsung Galaxy S7. But honestly, those people in my opinion need to get an eye checkup because apart from using more battery, there isn't much difference you'll notice from a naked eye. But now let's talk about the strengths of the smartphone, starting with the performance. It packs in a Snapdragon 821 CPU coupled with 4GB of RAM. Gaming is a pleasure on the smartphone and all apps too open very fast. In fact, it is among the fastest phones I've ever used. And for this thing, the software too needs to be credited. You get Android Nougat which is optimized and made fit for this phone and this phone runs it better than any other phone out there in the market right now. While features like this multi-window support and this 3D touch replacement might be made available on other phones soon, this intuitive Google Assistant which for me is the best voice assistant ever, as of now is exclusive to the pixels only. And the next big strength of this phone are its cameras. They are among the best Android cameras you'll find on any smartphone right now and they perform well in almost all conditions. Day or night, more or less light. Even though the camera app isn't the most intuitive in terms of features, the quality of photos is top notch nonetheless. The only major bummer for me is the video recording, which suffers from focusing issues occasionally and that is the only reason I find Samsung Galaxy S7 and iPhone 7's cameras a bit more reliable. Coming to the front cameras however, they are very good. Though the lack of a screen flash makes my night fees a bit dull. Lastly, let's talk about the battery life. I'm not liking it. Even though the phone has a lot of software optimization going for it, even though the phone uses a full HD display panel, still, a 2770mA itself does feel rather inadequate. Now, the phone does last more than an iPhone 7 if that's what Google intended to do, but most of the competition may be the flagship like Samsung Galaxy S7 or maybe HTC 10 and even flagship killers these days would easily annihilate Google Pixel's battery life. And for me, battery is an important thing if you have been following my reviews. However, the phone does charge a lot faster if that can compensate for your lack of juice. And that brings us to the end of the review part. Uh, I've covered all major aspects of this phone. I've told you how I feel about the phone. And now it's time for me to give you my verdict. Would I or would I not recommend you buying a Google Pixel in 2017? If you love Android and want a very fast smartphone and are able to look beyond the inadequacies of Google Pixel, then the phone might be for you. However, I won't personally recommend the Google Pixel. And the prime reason for that is the competition. 
Samsung Galaxy S7 for same or now even less price would give you a much better display, a much better battery, equally good cameras and it now runs on Android Nougat 2. Moreover, the design is insanely better than the Google Pixel. Uh, plus, Galaxy S8 is going to launch in a couple of months and S7's price might come down even further and Galaxy S8 might also be a viable alternative to the Google Pixel. Moreover, when it comes to features, you get micro SD card support, you get dual SIMs and you even get waterproofness on S7. In fact, I was surprised that Google Pixel is not waterproof. Even iPhones are not waterproof. So, for here and now, I won't recommend the Google Pixel yet. If you want a 5.5 inch phone if you can handle a phone that big then google pixel xl is a much better choice at least the battery is better on that phone having said that i have very high hopes from google pixel 2 when the designing gets sorted uh, you get the same kind of software fluency there the cameras get minor bump and become insanely better and the phone becomes waterproof then that phone will be one of the best flagships in my opinion of 2017 but here and now, I've told you my take on the phones. But what is more important for me to know is what is your take on the phones and what is your take about this video? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Show me your support, show me your comments in the comment box below. Don't forget to like this video, do not forget to share this video with your friends and most importantly, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. My name is Sid, come back for more. Ciao.